Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. My estranged husband crashed our daughter's baby shower after six months apart. Now I'm terrified he won't stop invading my life. I was at my daughter's baby shower when my estranged husband showed up out of nowhere. It was a complete shock. We had been separated for almost six months and I had no idea how he even found out about the event. I immediately got him kicked out of there and everyone who knew about our past understood why. Our relationship had been tumultuous from the beginning. He was emotionally abusive, controlling, and had a drinking problem that only made things worse. It took me a long time to realize that I needed to get out of that toxic environment, but when I did, I was determined to never let him back into my life again. But despite my efforts to keep him away, he wouldn't stop trying to contact me. He would show up at my workplace, send me endless messages, and even stalk me on social media. I had to change my phone number and block him from all my accounts, but he still managed to find ways to reach me. So when he showed up at the baby shower, it felt like he was trying to invade my life once again. I wasn't going to let him do that, not on such an important day. I didn't care if it seemed harsh or if people thought I was overreacting. They didn't know the things he had put me through. After the party, I went back home to find that he had been blowing up my phone with messages. At first, I tried to ignore them. But then, curiosity got the better of me and I decided to read what he had to say. Oh boy, was that a mistake. The messages were a mix of pleading, begging, and anger. He couldn't understand why I was being so cruel to him, and he kept insisting that he had changed and that he deserved another chance. But I knew better than to believe that. I had heard it all before, and I wasn't going to let him manipulate me once again. I blocked his number and tried to forget about him, but it was hard. The memories of our past kept coming back to haunt me and I found myself constantly second-guessing my decision to leave him. It was a battle that I fought every day, and some days it felt like I was losing, but I knew that I had made the right decision. I didn't want my daughter to grow up in an environment where she saw her mother being mistreated. I wanted her to know that she deserved better than that, and that it was okay to walk away from toxic relationships. It wasn't easy, but I had to stay strong. I couldn't let him back into my life no matter how much he tried to convince me otherwise. I had to focus on building a better future for myself and my daughter, a one where we were safe, happy, and free from his influence. The next day, there was a knock at my door. To my surprise, it was my husband's family standing outside. I hesitated for a moment, but then I invited them in. As soon as they entered, they apologized for what happened at the baby shower. They explained that they had no idea my husband was planning on showing up and that they had tried to talk him out of it. They were just as shocked as I was when he appeared. I could tell that they were genuine in their apology and that they truly cared about my well-being and the babies. We had always had a good relationship and they had been supportive of me during the separation. I was grateful for their understanding and willingness to make things right. We spent some time talking and catching up and they even brought some gifts for the baby. It was a nice change of pace from the drama of the previous day and I appreciated their efforts to make amends. As they left, I couldn't help but feel a sense of relief. I knew that I still had a long road ahead of me but having my husband's family by my side made me feel less alone in the process. It was a small step towards healing, but it was a step nonetheless. Two days passed. I heard a knock on my door in the middle of the night. I groggily got out of bed wondering who could be at my door at this hour. As I approached the door my heart started pounding in my chest as I saw a silhouette through the glass. It was my husband. I hesitated for a moment before slowly opening the door. Without a word he pushed his way inside and I could smell the alcohol on his breath. I tried to back away but he grabbed my arm, his grip tight and painful. He demanded to know why I had kicked him out of the baby shower saying that he had every right to be there. I tried to reason with him but he wasn't listening. He started to yell accusing me of trying to keep his family away from him. He said that I was trying to take away his rights as a father and that I was being unfair to him. I was scared but I knew that I had to stay strong. I told him firmly that he needed to leave but he refused to budge. He continued to yell and scream at me getting increasingly agitated as time passed. Finally, after what felt like hours, he calmed down. He slumped down on the couch, his head in his hands. I took a deep breath and asked him to leave again. This time he got up without a word and walked out the door leaving me shaken and scared. I locked the door behind him and leaned against it trying to calm my racing heart. The next afternoon he showed up again. As soon as I opened the door I saw him standing there looking at me with a remorseful expression. He started talking saying how sorry he was for his behavior but the anger was still apparent in his voice. He asked me if he had hurt me or the baby and I could see the genuine concern in his eyes. I took a deep breath and told him that he had hurt me but I didn't know about the baby. He looked even more upset than before and I could tell that he was trying hard to control his emotions. I didn't want to let him in but he said he just wanted to talk. We went inside and he sat down on the couch looking down at his hands. He started talking about how he felt during the past few months, how he had felt lost and alone without me, and how he regretted his actions. He asked me if we could try again to start over and to forget the past. 
I didn't know what to say. I was still hurt, angry and confused about everything that had happened. I told him that I needed time to think about it to consider if it was the right thing to do. He looked disappointed but he nodded his head in understanding. He got up and tried to give me a hug but I stepped back. He looked at my bump one more time and walked out. As I watched him go, I knew that this was far from over. There were still many things we needed to talk about and resolve before we could even think about starting over. As the days went by, I found myself in a constant state of emotional turmoil. My husband's unexpected appearance along with his persistence to make things right left me feeling conflicted. A week later he called me again and suggested counseling. He said that he wanted to work through our issues and be there for both me and our baby. He acknowledged the hurt and pain he had caused me and vowed to do anything to make things right. Hearing him speak with such sincerity touched my heart and I found myself considering his proposal. The thought of counseling with him seemed daunting but I also knew deep down that I didn't want to shut the door on our marriage without giving it a chance. So I hesitantly agreed to his proposal and we scheduled our first counseling session. Update 1, two months later. After much consideration, I decided to give my husband a second chance. We started attending couples counseling sessions once a week in addition to our individual therapy sessions. During our sessions, we worked on rebuilding our communication, trust and understanding of each other's needs. It was difficult at first, but we made progress slowly but surely. As we continued our counseling, we both realized that we had a lot of individual issues that we needed to work on as well. So we started attending separate therapy sessions to address those issues. To my surprise, the rest of my husband's family joined in on the family counseling sessions as well. It was a great support system for us, as well as a way for them to understand our perspective and what we needed in order to move forward. Now I'm only a month away from giving birth to our baby girl. It's been a long and difficult journey, but I'm happy to say that we've made progress and we're in a much better place than we were before. He stopped drinking. He also calls and asks if I'm comfortable enough for him to be visiting. We still have a long way to go, but I can see that he is actually trying this time. I'm still cautious and hesitant, but we are committed to being the best parents we can be for our daughter. I just can't believe he had the audacity to show up uninvited at the baby shower. He had been estranged for six months and had no right to barge in like that. It just shows how little respect he has for boundaries. She shouldn't have taken him back. I guess she still hasn't. I don't trust him. He hurt her and the baby so much when he was still around. He can't just come back now and expect everything to be okay. He needs to earn her trust back and that's not going to happen overnight. I'm glad he's finally realized how much he's hurt her and is trying to change. It takes a lot of courage to admit that you were wrong and seek counseling. I just hope he's sincere and doesn't end up hurting her again. Next story. I am the child-free uncle of two children. Taylor is the daughter of my sister Mary and Ben is the son of my sister Yasmin. I love both these children dearly. I held them the day they were born, changed their diapers, heard their earliest words, told them all sorts of absurd uncle-told tales and generally watched them grow from babies to children and now into preteens. They're both 11 and only 4 months apart in age, but they are vastly different. Taylor is fairly rounded out. She's into the typical pop culture preteen things you'd expect at her age and she also plays sports and has a strong interest in science and the outdoors as well, which is a subject we definitely bond over. Ben is a different story. Since the age of eight, Ben has been glued to a computer screen of some kind and I can't recall the last time I saw him where he did not spend 90% of the time playing on a computer, iPad, etc. I'm not judging him for this. Just a statement of fact though, I do think it's a bit concerning, but that's an issue for his parents. Additionally though, I love him, Ben has become more difficult to like lately. He's often rude, sarcastic, and acts like a smartass. I know this is partially part of his age, but his parents don't push back against this enough in my opinion. Also worth noting is he rarely ever wants to participate in any activities that aren't digital. For example, recently we had a family get-together at a lake and Ben just stayed inside the whole time. Recently my family had a few get-togethers and at one my wife and I were talking about a trip that we're planning for the summer. We recently purchased a camper and we're going to do a road trip to a nearby state to do some rock hunting. We're both amateur geologists and we will also stop at some springs and parks and such. This is planned for early summer without solid dates yet. Taylor was very enthusiastic about the idea and asked if she could come along. My wife and I were both okay with this and told her we'd have to talk to her parents. This was done with pretty much my whole family around including Ben who was on his computer. I know he was at least partially listening because earlier in the conversation he asked if we had a TV in the camper. Later I got a call from Yasmin who accused me of favoring Taylor and excluding Ben because I didn't ask him if he wanted to go too. I told her that's ridiculous. Ben could have said if he wanted to go and honestly he's never shown any interest in the kind of things we'll be doing. Yasmin said we're still leaving Ben out which I suppose we are but ultimately this is my wife and I's trip and I don't want to spend big chunks of the time dealing with attitude or fighting to get Ben to come along with us. 
Otherwise, I foresee at least one of us having to miss out on many activities because Ben will refuse to do them and just want to stay in the camper. So Ada for not asking and not planning on asking? Ben if he wants to come along. Edit. We didn't invite anyone. Taylor jumped in and asked when we were describing the trip if she could come along. NTA. Surely it's completely normal for two different cousins to start doing different kinds of things. Not everybody has to be included in every activity, especially if you're the uncle, not the parent. Everybody knows children, especially boys and girls, develop at different rates at different ages. When you want to join in with our adult-type activities, we'll be happy to have you along. Over their lifetimes, there will be many times when one comes with you for something and the other does not. This is just the first of those occasions. NTA. Yasmin is mad that she won't have a chance to dump her irritating kid on someone this upcoming summer. She's not concerned about her kid feeling left out. She's concerned that she doesn't get a kid-free vacation. Ben would not bring anything to the trip other than attitude. Taylor is going to help make great memories. You didn't even ask Taylor, but she brought it up. If Ben were interested, that would have been his time to speak up. No, this is his mom upset. She doesn't get rid of him and an 11-year being a rude and sarcastic smartass. That's not the age. That is on his parents. Next story. I, 26 female, have been married for seven years. My husband and I were young when we got together, and as a result I became like another kid to his parents. That's another story for just no. Anyways, I never thought of his sister 27 female as anything less than my own. So when she had her kid 2 male I was excited. I've got my own kids but I was happy to have a nephew. So my sister-in-law lives next door with her parents. The issue is I become the baby drop-off center. I need to run to the store turns into me texting her 4 plus hours later trying to figure out where she is. It's always someone else's fault for why she's late. I'm in college online though and can't exactly do my work when her kid is on the sleeping schedule of 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. But my kids attend school and need their sleep. They have a decent bedtime. I'll also add I have a hard time telling people no. Currently in therapy for that among other issues. Because of those reasons when she came to me saying she had a job offer she asked which of two schedules worked for me. Didn't ask if I would be the babysitter. I told her neither did. So we agreed to a schedule where I'd watch him half the schedule and her parents would watch him the other. Usually her parents back out, but I told her that I wasn't going to be able to happen. While her first interview training is today, she told me days ago her dad was watching her kids since he'd probably still be asleep. Okay, awesome. Then at 2 a.m. the day she messaged me and said you're still able to watch him tomorrow, right? I hope so because I have no one else. I was pissed and I told her so. I told her I'm being taken advantage of and letting me know last minute she wasn't having her dad watch him isn't okay. Dad isn't sick, just didn't want to. I told her how it isn't right that everyone else can say that they don't want to and it's okay because she knows I have a hard time saying no. It ended with her apologizing and begging me to keep him, but I still said no. She told me she will lose the job if she can't find a babysitter, and I told her he isn't my kid, so it's not my issue. My mother-in-law then messaged me telling me she's going to straighten me out, and that if my nephew is such a bother, then I just won't keep him anymore. She also told me I'm an awful person for screwing over my sister, and she expected more from me. My husband agrees with me but won't say anything to his mom and sister. A I T A. Should I watch him anyways? TIA. Oh my, the entitlement for me is mind-boggling. NTA. You need to hold your ground. You weren't planning on having the child and you never agreed to be back up this day. What if you did have plans? They just assume you don't or that it's not important. Does she pay you or would she be paying you for these days? I mean, babysitting occasionally as a favor is one thing or both babysitting helping each other but regular child care expecting you to be available as backup on demand that should be compensated. She needs reliable child care or a more flexible job. But you aren't obligated to do it, and if this happens day one you know it will continue to happen and is not something you agree to or should make your problem. Edit to add, your husband absolutely needs to speak up as well. It's his family and he shouldn't let them guilt you or bully you into agreeing. She is taking advantage of you and it's not okay. NTA. The difference is the niece enthusiastically asked to join while nephew didn't show interest and you know he won't be interested in rocks and parks and campers. He'll be happily playing Call of Duty while you're happily enjoying nature. Everyone doing what they enjoy. It does suck that now you have to bring an 11-year-old on your intimate trip with your wife. You weren't the one that showed favoritism, but rather the kids showed their interest. I grew up a Ben. When we would rent beach houses as a family, I would bring my Xbox along because I hated the beach. I had fun playing card at home all day besides shitty beach house Wi-Fi. Everyone else had fun getting sunburned and sandy. Then we'd all have fun going out for a meal. No point bringing someone to a situation you know they won't have a good time being in. Next story I, 28M, just found out that my fiancé, 28F, cheated four months before our upcoming wedding. More details in post, what should I do? Hey all, I don't normally browse this subreddit but have been on Reddit for 14 years now, currently on my throwaway, and I'm not sure where else to turn to for this. 
I know that this sub has a lot of eyes on it and I hope I can gain some insight from you folks because I feel that I'm in an incredibly tough position right now. This is going to be a long one, so buckle in. I, 28M, proposed to my fiancé, 28F, last year in June, and our wedding is currently booked for October 5th of this year. The venue is already half paid for, $24,000 total, as well as our services like DJ, efficient, photographer slash videographer, a team. Just tonight, through plenty of conversations spanning the last two months, it finally came out that my fiancé cheated on me a month and a half ago with an old flame that randomly popped back up in her life. Let me rewind things for a moment. My fiancé and I met just a little over three years ago during COVID through mutual friends. We had gone to high school together but never spoke to each other then, and one night during a virtual games night we connected and I felt a strong urge to make a move, despite everything being locked down during the pandemic. I asked her if she wanted to go for a walk through our local park since everything was shut down and she told me she'd love to. Next thing I know, we really hit it off big times, and she essentially moves in the next day. We both connected on so many levels, the immediate attraction and connection was obvious, and from there we would only see our relationship blossom and grow without any end in sight. Like any relationship, we've hit some bumps in the road along our journey, but three plus years later I can say that we've always grown from these bumps, and everything always seems to only get better. These bumps being things like petty arguments, differences in opinion, that sort of thing. She's the only person who I've ever felt I can truly grow with, and always trust that things will be okay especially since our communication is on a level that I've never known with anyone else. For all of these reasons, I've always felt that we're perfect for each other and last year I proposed to her without a doubt in my mind. She said yes, and we were both over the moon. I should mention that she's incredibly close with her family, while I am not very close with mine. Since the beginning of our relationship, her family took me in and immediately made me feel like one of their own. I love her family almost as much as I love her, and I know they feel the same about me. After being engaged for almost a year, we're most of the way through wedding planning and I thought that things were better than never before. Until a few months ago, my fiancé brought up in late March that she was really nervous about the wedding. No biggie, I talked her through it like we always do and she felt much better. She mentioned her worries were around entering the next chapter of life and saying goodbye to our early 20s and younger years. I assured her that this next chapter will be just as amazing and she seemed to react well. A couple of days go by and she's stressed out again, this time providing a few more details about feeling like we're entering the boring chapter. Again, no biggie, I talk her through this one and she reacts well again. This goes on for about a couple more days and I can tell she's getting cold feet a bit. We continue to talk about these things in open communication and the conversation ends up directing towards some shortcomings in our relationship. For a few days, we work together to identify the root of these issue. It she tells me she knows it's not my fault, but that she's feeling a lack of romance. We go over every minute detail and while some things are valid, like each of us needing to make more of an effort, we identify that there's nothing else really missing romance-wise. Eventually, after enough communication, she feels instantly better and the worries go away. Cue the guilty era. My fiancé is feeling better about everything and keeps profusely apologizing for how she was acting and how she's actually very excited to get married. Every time I reassure her that it's fine. You got cold feet, that's perfectly normal, and I'm happy you're over it. But the apologizing continues for the better part of a month. At this point, I'm kind of feeling like something's up, so I provide a safe space to come clean and ask her what's really going on. She breaks down and explains that what she was feeling before about our relationship was very real, and a couple weeks into it, an old flame of hers reached out for the first time in over three years to see how things are going. She mentioned that the conversation was very appropriate, at first, until he started to come on to her, despite knowing she's now engaged. She told me, to her own guilt, this made her feel some excitement after having felt like that was something that was lacking in our own relationship. She then explains that she shut the conversation down immediately and that she's felt immense guilt ever since. I just appreciate her honesty. We talk through this like we do everything else and laugh about how it could have been so much worse. If only I knew. She mentioned to me a week later that her and her best friend have a Toronto day planned. We live outside of Toronto and this is a very normal thing that they would do. I'm quite close with her best friend and thought nothing of it. She has her Toronto day with her friend and makes it back to me the next day. From here, things continue like normal. However, the guilty conscience never stops. My fiancé continues to profusely apologize about the time she was getting cold feet and talk to that guy. I keep reassuring her that it was okay and that we were able to work through it until I figure something's up. Again, I provide a safe space for her to tell me what's really happening, and she tells me she didn't just see her friend in Toronto, she went with her friend to meet up with this guy and to get closure. She explains that she and this guy had a complicated past and that him popping back up like that needed to be resolved. So she told her best friend, who advised against it at first, but decided to go with her so that nothing would happen. She explains this is why she's been so guilty and reassured me that nothing happened but that the guilt of keeping this from me has been eating her alive. 
I'm hurt, but our communication has been solid to this point, and I'm just happy she found the courage to tell me. We go through it, but in the end, I feel we come out stronger. For weeks, our relationship only seems to improve and our bond grows much stronger. At this point, there isn't a doubt in my mind that we'll have a beautiful future together. Cue more guilty behavior. Weeks of this continue and eventually I lie. I tell her that I know the truth of what actually happened, and she has to tell me the events that really took place for us to precede our relationship. I was bluffing. She comes out with the truth, the full truth, and nothing but the truth. She tells me it wasn't just a conversation, and her friend wasn't there. She went to his place in Toronto and stayed the night. They talked about where they left off and where she is now, one thing lead to another and they slept together. I'm mortified and she goes on to explain that both of them felt absolutely terrible about it. She mentioned that they both agreed to never speak of it again and both blocked each other entirely after saying goodbye for the last time. This is truly why she's felt so terribly guilty. After this conversation I can tell she's told the full truth. The worst part is I can see just how remorseful she is, but it doesn't take away the hurt it's causing me. I kicked her out tonight. She's now at her mom's place while I write this post. The thing is, after everything we've been through I know she's telling the entire truth. I know she's truly remorseful, and that this was completely out of character for her. I know the only reason she lied was because she couldn't believe her own actions and wanted to spare me from the pain. I know that she and this guy are done and she could never see herself pursuing things further with him after everything that went down. I completely believe her story, we've talked for hours about it, and this is the woman I've known for three plus years, not that woman that ran around behind my back but it still doesn't take away the pain I'm feeling. I still love her, and I do believe a future exists where we can work through this, but at the same time I'm worried that things will never be the same again between us, no matter how much trust is regained. I worry that we'll never look at each other the same, and that the future we've always pictured together will forever be stained with this thing that lasted no more than a single day in Toronto. I feel there's so much on the line with ending things here. We have the wedding coming up, and I'll be losing her, now mine as well. Entire family whom I also love so much, in addition to the future I've always dreamed of. I haven't told anybody I know IRL yet, my mom is asleep and I'm weighing the impact of telling those I know personally. I can only imagine she will need to fess up to her mother tonight having been kicked out without her engagement ring. I'm laying awake here, and weighing all of the options. Please help me by providing your perspective. Please let me know if you need any more information to form an opinion. I'm insanely lost right now. Thanks for watching till the end, wishing you an awesome day. Feel free to drop a comment if you've got more to share, I'd love to hear from you.